Coming up, Team Better Block is up at bat in your neighborhood. An HRBT expansion update, Dr. King remembered, and 10 more stories from across the Mermaid City are coming your way on Norfolk News Now. Welcome to the February edition of Norfolk News Now. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Thanks for joining us. One of Norfolk's biggest initiatives the past few years has been the Neighbors Building Neighborhoods philosophy, a community ownership model for effective neighborhood revitalization, essentially creating neighborhoods of choice where families live because they want to. In addition to help from the community, Norfolk has a hand from Team Better Block, a neighborhood revitalization company from Texas with a little different way of doing things. They were recently in Norfolk to give a presentation to residents and city leaders. Our man John Linka captured that moment on video. How can we take the best parts of all of the city and put it into one place to get it kick-started, urban defibrillate that place, make it, make it alive again? Team Better Block uh, with its principals uh, Andrew Howard and Jason hey. Roberts uh, create quick, inexpensive, high-impact projects or changes to a one block at a time uh, that can help underutilized uh, areas uh, that need revitalization. We do that through a participatory process where we actually get out there and build it together. We're not just drawing pretty pictures about uh, how we could uh, reinvent our communities. Every city has this problem where we don't have enough resources and we have this huge scale. We've got a, we've got a city that's you can't repair everything overnight you got to start at a smaller level, so our approach is at the block. Team Better Block came in and did an analysis of uh, four primary areas of the city. Uh, those were uh, based on uh, three uh, of our economic uh, strategic uh, area initiatives that are part of our new general plan. And so they did an analysis uh, uh, as far as the likelihood that a demonstration project uh, uh, could take place there. We will get that feedback and we'll start playing with them. We've, uh, the initial feedback is, is that most of the areas that we did pick uh, do fit the model. We look at things like form, you know, is, is there good buildings out there? Are the streets able to be calmed and, and help? Is there a neighborhood associated with it? Uh, are there vacant spots out there that we can fill? And we saw that in every one of those, and uh, uh, we, we think every one of them could be better with a, with a project like this. Inexpensive materials, paint, bollards, signs, movable chairs, these are the things that we're seeing cities now use as ways to transform locations. We like to work in short time frames, 90, 120 days, and what, what we like to say is within two years, you can see a dramatic change in a place. There needs to be a bolstering of the uh, bicycle uh, community. I would say number one, you, are, you have a bike month, I would extend that, I would do more than once a month, or, or one month out of the year. I do something every other month or so. Build that bike community. It's the most awesome way to, to get your community energized about neighborhood revitalization, saving historic preservation, uh, preserving old buildings, and building communities to get them on the bicycle. We, we go slower and we, we look at places better when we do that. And uh, it also builds a lot of network. Because uh, to get this stuff done, it takes more than just one or two people. It takes a, a network of folks to share responsibility. Basically show that on a small scale and through co-responsibility of having uh, the local community co uh, committed in that area uh, to start some momentum for having business growth, uh, for having uh, uh, use of the streets, use of the public spaces, or recreating public spaces that maybe uh, uh, folks have been waiting for some sort of huge investment but realize that if they just start doing it, then they can make things happen. We don't need a lot of bureaucracy to, to make the city better. We just need to get our people doing things that people do in places where other people can see them and experience them and be part of a community. It's about community that is going to make these spaces that are in the city that are so much potential, so much potential be something that just makes Norfolk everything that it can possibly be. Uh, so we'll look to uh, continue to do um, some stakeholder input and uh, probably uh, set uh, a an event for them um, this year to do, if not one, but at least a couple of these. Uh, when you do a better block here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to use some of these principles that I went over today, but it's going to be very much what y'all make it. I said y'all. 
To learn more about Team Better Block and what it could do for Norfolk, just log on to TeamBetterBlock.com. The Virginia Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration are studying the I-64 Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Corridor from I-664 in Hampton to I-564 in Norfolk. The study is intended to find an alternative solution to address the lack of capacity and correct roadway bridge and tunnel deficiencies in the corridor. A draft environmental impact statement has the attention of officials and residents in Norfolk, many of whom made their voices heard during the VDOT public hearing last month. According to the VDOT draft, the project would impact about 150 acres of real estate in Norfolk and would disturb about 50 acres of wetlands and seven different park and recreation facilities in Norfolk. The study indicates upwards of 185 residences may need to be acquired to make a way for widening, and more than 700 properties would be impacted by the noise from the project. There would also be impacts to Merrimack Landing and Forest Lawn Cemetery, both historic properties. Residents can see the entire draft on VDOT's website, vdot.virginia.gov. The residents of Fairmount Park headed into 2013 riding a wave of accomplishment. They recently celebrated their many accomplishments at an annual holiday dinner. The Fairmount Park Beautification Committee announced it had notified about 30 residents about possible code violations. 23 of those residents stepped up and addressed the concerns on their own. A new dollar deal store opened for business in a once rundown building. The Civic League was awarded grants that they plan to use to restore a wetlands area and and create a pocket park. But it wasn't just the adults getting into the community spirit. The Youth Civic League sold 75 t-shirts, made 70 fruit baskets for the teachers at Lafayette Winona Middle School, built seven birdhouses for the nearby wetlands, and made food baskets for four needy families. The results of the community effort show. Violent crime in the area is down 18% and property crimes dropped by 7%. It's AIR, only better. Norfolk's Address Information Resource, or AIR, has been upgraded to provide even more useful information about property throughout the city. The system pulls together 200 different data elements for each property, including flood zone information, aerial photos, and structure information. The updated version includes upgrades based on feedback city residents and staff have provided over the past three years. Users can now find and print recycling dates, look up zoning information, get information about codes, cases, and more. The user interface has also been revamped to make the site easier to use. To take AIR 2.0 for a test drive, go to Norfolk.gov and click on the word Maps on the left side of the page. Norfolk and Portsmouth are teaming up to help more residents qualify to be a part of their Community Emergency Response Teams, or CERT. The program trains volunteers to help themselves and others in the immediate aftermath of a disaster and to provide directed assistance to public safety and city officials in the aftermath. CERT training requires participants to attend nine two-and-a-half-hour training sessions. This year, participants can take the classes in Norfolk on Wednesday evenings or in Portsmouth on Thursday evenings. Classes begin mid-February and meet once a week through April 6th. For more information about CERT training, call 441-5619. Last month, residents and city leaders came together to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with a walk and special ceremony at the MLK Memorial downtown. The Triple N's John Linka was there. The air was crisp and clear, and so was the march and its message. Hand in hand together, we shall overcome someday. The march was Norfolk's tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The one thing that we, we are concerned about and very proud of is that there's a legacy that we are endeavoring to continue in celebrating and commemorating the uh, legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. For the second time, Norfolk's Garden of Prayer Worship Center joined the city of Norfolk and hundreds of residents to pay tribute to the civil rights leader. And I think that's what Dr. King was about, collectivism. Yeah. collectivism. Uh, in our efforts to bring about a greater society. The walk began at the worship center and continued down Church Street to a ceremony at the Martin Luther King Memorial at the intersection of Church Street and Bramlesen Avenue. <laughs> Today 
here in Norfolk and across the nation, people are gathering to celebrate and remember the life and the legacy of one of America's great sons, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We honor Dr. King on this special day for his courage, and for his leadership, and for his achievements and his message of hope. The day had double significance. Our community is ready to celebrate not only Dr. Martin Luther King, but the president as well. And I'm excited about the fact that President Obama made sure that his inaugural would be held on the day of Martin Luther King's celebration. Because of the insistence and perseverance of Dr. King, America has become the America that he envisioned. They elected this president by the content of his character and not the color of his skin. Something that would have never happened without the man whom everyone here marched in honor of to celebrate, to remember, and to teach others about. I have some great nieces and nephews that never participated in the march, so I brought them along today, plus a granddaughter okay. that never participated. Excellent. So it's just something that I want them just to remember. Yeah. And, you know, just learn that it's a great honor. I learned he was a leader. He was, um, he had the Nobel Peace Prize. He would like for us to all uh, be together and marching. Dr. King inspired us all to believe there would be a day when people of every race would come together in a colorblind and unified America. And every year we must strive to move more closer, more closely to that goal. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. A healthy Norfolk is one of city manager Marcus Jones' initiatives for the Mermaid City. Last month, the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Open Space did their part in helping to celebrate Healthy Youth Day. The Triple N's John Linka was there. Ready? These Norfolk kids were noodling around for their health. Today is uh, Virginia Healthy Youth Day. It's a statewide holiday, and it, we're, we just want to promote children to uh, be healthy, be active, you know, eat well, all those types of things. You know, it's, a, it's a very important cause, you know, with obesity on the rise, we, we're trying to fight that. The weapon of choice, in addition to the noodles, of course. We're dancing, we're just dancing to the music. Dancing to the music of Zumba. <laughs> Skipping to their loo. Right, left, left, right, left, and. A little volleyball and dodgeball. It was all thanks to the City of Norfolk and the Department of Recreation, Parks and Open Space to help teach these kids about being healthy and living healthy lives. It's very important that you stay healthy, that you eat well, that you get out and move about so that when you get older, when you're all grown up, you're not um, all stiff and achy and all that stuff. The kids were greeted by the Granby High School cheer squad. <laughs> the Norfolk Admirals, and the Norfolk Tides mascot, Riptide, who, let's be honest, could maybe use a little more healthy activity to trim up some of those pesky nether regions. With all this activity, the kids were bound to get thirsty. Who likes Mountain Dew? But there was a health lesson here, too. One of those small bottles of Mountain Dew contains 77 grams of sugar, equal to this many teaspoons of sugar. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and a half. The sugar that was in here is now in here. Now if I say, here, have a Mountain Dew. Start drinking. That, this is exactly what is in this. One, one of these. And Americans normally eat, drink two, three, four of them. That's how we get 150 pounds of sugar in our body and this is why 70 percent of Americans right now are overweight and obese because they're eating processed foods instead of cauliflower and spinach and broccoli. I think it's a really great thing because it encourages them to not only eat healthy but to be active. We hear the health statistics about the health of so many Americans being so poor. So I think this is a really good outreach tool to encourage them to really take care of their bodies. 
encouraging them to take care of their bodies so they can run around like this for a very, very long time. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. When we come back, a new gym means new opportunity for the Ingleside community. Plus, guns and hoses live in Norfolk. We'll explain and a look at what and who is new at the zoo. So, Rachel, we've been dating for quite a while now, and things are great between us. Yes, yes they are. And you know, I've been saving my money to buy something expensive. So, on Monday, I'm going to a paid tax preparation service and get a rapid refund loan so that I can, so that I can buy a motorcycle. That is one of the craziest things I've ever heard come out of your mouth. Why would you go there to get your taxes done when you can get your taxes done at a Vita site? I heard that you don't get your tax refund back for a long time when you go to one of those places. I can get mine back the same day. But you pay hefty fees for it. Fees for getting your taxes prepared and fees for the loan. I got my taxes prepared at a Vita site last year and I got my tax refund back a little over a week later and it was free. That quick? If you go to the Vita site, you'd still have enough money to put in your savings and ride that motorcycle in matching black leather jackets. For more on the EITC and free tax preparation, call or visit our website. Welcome back to the Triple N. Now that we're in February, high school and college basketball is in full swing. But there is also reason to celebrate community basketball in Norfolk. John Linka takes us inside a new gym and a new world of recreation opportunity for residents young and younger. Baskets were scored and nets were cut, but this was not for a victory in a basketball game. It was for a victory in the opening of a brand new gymnasium. When members of a neighborhood and city leaders come together with common goals, great things can happen. And look around, great, a great thing did happen. That great thing is the new $1.9 million Ingleside Gymnasium adjacent to Ingleside Elementary School. It has a high school regulation basketball court and two side running courts. The children in the area didn't have any place to play when it got cold out or when it got dark. And the, and the, the students at, at the school here didn't really have a gym. We thought if we could do one gym, we'd get a two for it, right? You could, the community could use it on, on the weekends and in the evenings as well, and the students could use it during the day. In all, it's an 8,400 square foot facility for athletic leagues, PE classes, and open recreation basketball fun. Plenty of space for Councilwoman Angela Williams to perhaps get in a little more practice. I see this as an extension of actually First Lady Michelle Obama's initiative on let's move to get our children out active and, and keep them healthy. So this is a wonderful opportunity for our kids to have somewhere to play. A place to play that will keep them here playing instead of being out elsewhere in their free time. My thing is that rec centers and gyms are needed. They are needed, I mean, because uh, if there's no gym, no rec center, no prayer for the children to play, then that leaves them in the street idle. And if they're in the street idle, then they're gonna get in trouble. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. Let the madness begin, March Madness that is. Norfolk Scope will be playing host to this year's men's and women's MEAC basketball tournaments. The festivities start Saturday, March 9th with a concert by Aretha Franklin. Events and games continue through the week and culminate the following Saturday with the men's and women's championship games. Hampton University's Lady Pirates are the defending women's champs. The Norfolk State Spartans will be trying to hang on to the men's top spot for a second year. For a complete schedule of events, tickets, and information, visit the tournament website at miachoops.com. Would you go to an event where police and firefighters raise a ruckus with sticks and pucks while raising some big money for a local children's hospital? Count us in. Every year, police officers and firefighters from around Hampton Roads face off on the ice at Scope. It's called Guns and Hoses, and the proceeds from the event go to the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. Each year, the Guns and Hoses game gets bigger. Team Bravest, the firefighters, leads Team Finest, the police, in the series four to three. It may have helped that the firefighters have a former Norfolk Admiral on their side, but we're not talking blowouts here. For the last five years, nearly every game has been decided by two goals or less. The money raised this time surpassed last year's total of $14,000 raised for CHKD. 
There was quite the birthday celebration recently at Keep Norfolk Beautiful's Ernie Morgan Center. It was an open house celebration recognizing K&B's 15 years of supporting sustainability. The event was co-hosted by the Norfolk Environmental Commission and Friends of Norfolk's Environment. The all-day event was loaded with historical information about the Ernie Morgan Center, environmental sustainability, food, and of course, lots of fun. To learn more about the great work done by the folks that keep Norfolk beautiful, go to norfolkbeautiful.org. Each month, the Mary D. Pretlow Library hosts a Meet, Learn, Discover series of lectures and guests sponsored by Norfolk Public Library and AARP. Last month, they got a special treat. A string quartet from the Virginia Symphony strummed their strings in front of a packed room in a performance called From Bach to Beatbox. Folks got to experience the music of Vivaldi, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, the Beatles, and today's contemporary beatbox sound with an orchestral twist. For more on the Virginia Symphony, just log on to virginiasymphony.org. To learn more about NPL's Meet, Learn, Discover series, which takes place on the third Wednesday of each month, just call 664-7328, extension 340. All adults are welcome to attend. No registration is required, and library programs are free and open to the public. There are some new additions to the population of the Virginia Zoo. Recently, the Triple N's John Linka got a chance to check out who's new at the zoo. There was quite the surprise at the Virginia Zoo back in August. Our male and female Siming, we, we knew they were exhibiting breeding behavior, but uh, unfortunately, we did not pick up the signs that she was pregnant. We were looking for it, but uh, they just didn't show up to the extent that we noticed and so the zookeepers came in one day and we had a baby Simon. In addition to the natural addition, there have been some other planned imports since November, including AJ, a two-year-old bongo from the Jacksonville Zoo. Bongos are the largest species of forest antelope. They come from Africa specifically, a lot of them are in the Kenya area. But they're a they're large forest antelope. They have a, a striking chestnut brown color uh, with white stripes which is camouflage for them in their forest habitat, but for us is just beautiful. We've had a very successful bongo breeding program here at the Virginia Zoo, and 2004 actually one of our bongos that we bred here was sent back to Africa to help repopulate them in the wild along with other bongos from U.S. zoos. There's also these three new leaf-tailed geckos. See? No? Well, that's proof that their camouflage works really well. They look like sticks and branches, and they can flatten their bodies to hide from predators, and apparently from our eyes also. Then there's this guy. This is an Iranian newt, otherwise known as a Kaiser newt. They come from lower areas of Asia, like towards the Middle East, and they can survive both dry and wet seasons, depending on breeding. And they're a highly endangered species, so there's a big conservation cause to call for them, and they're Mainly carnivorous, they'll eat small insects and anything that kind of floats in the water. But they'll also eat things on land as well, like crickets and small worms. There's also a new Solomon Island leaf frog and a baby snake that's a rhino, at least as far as the nose goes. This is one of our female rhino rat snakes. Uh, these guys get their name based on the little nub that's right there on top of their nose. That's it's not sharp, it's kind of spongy, but they just pretty much use it as a decoration. So when they're, because they, they're arboreal, so when they'll hang off of trees, they'll kind of act like a leaf, and then when a small rodent comes by, they'll actually um, strike. So with countless animals to choose from, why bring in these particular guys? The animals that we have here are typically endangered species, and, and one of our missions is to uh, try to conserve these species by breeding them in U.S. zoos and maintaining a viable genetic population which can then be used someday, like in the case of the bongo, maybe to repopulate them in some of these wild areas where, they're, where they don't exist anymore. And there will soon be a brand new animal wellness campus to help take care of the growing population here at the Virginia Zoo. Walls are going up and it's expected to be completed in the spring or summer of this year. But this new animal wellness campus is not just for the animals. So another one of our key missions in addition to conservation is education. So the 
Animal Wellness Campus will have an educational component where people will actually be able to watch procedures being done and, and those kinds of things. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Not as much fun as the baby Simon is having with her mom, eating breakfast while sitting in their breakfast plate. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. That wraps up the February edition of Norfolk News Now on the Triple N. Thanks for watching Norfolk's Neighborhood Network for all things Norfolk. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Take care of yourself and your city and celebrate life daily.